I kind of got this sprung on me a little bit, and I'm, but I'm always prepared to give a story of what Jesus is doing in my life. You should always be prepared. And I was looking back at all the ones I've, I've written over the last years, and I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And then it's like, here's the testimony that I wrote uh, just before we left Zion Church to help Cub start Crossroads. I'm not going to read it. I'm just telling you. so Because we'd be here for four hours, and Ron had come over here and punched me. So, <clears throat> But uh, one of the verses that was in there that I, I wrote down was John 8. 31 and 32 it says to the Jews that who have believed Jesus said if I t if you hold to my teaching you are really my dis disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free and that's why one of the reasons we we moved to Salina is to help people be free and I was like wow I forgot all about that and uh, there's one on prayer and then there's youth camp then there's a whole bunch of them that are just really, like, I'm totally depressed. You know, Alan can uh, go with this. We were, Every week we would, or every month we'd go to the church board. Well, we ain't got no money. We ain't got no money. We ain't got no money. We're going to cut Pastor Ron's salary. We're going to cut uh, Mary Lister's hours. We're going to, you know, pay only this or that, you know. I was like, oh, and now the Lord, you know, is blessing that. There was a testimony about giving, you know, saying, hey, there's Malachi that says, you know, we bring everything into the storehouse and let God give you a bunch of blessing. Just look the, the guy next to you. There's a blessing or gal. So, and there's that. Then there was a testimony that I gave in this on the 17 or 2017 you know, the about going to celebrate recovery. That was pretty cool. And uh, then I wrote something. I wrote my story and put it on Facebook, and I got a bunch of stuff from you all saying, oh, hey, that was kind of cool. So, anyways, if you write it down, you can go back and say, huh, that's what God was doing back then. What's he doing now? So, what's he doing now? I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, and I suffer from unforgiveness and hopelessness that I just realized from cross-training over there and from overeating, and my name is Curtis. <laughs> Courtney, you're so awesome. <laughs> Uh, uh, 16 or 17 weeks ago, Mark Brown, Buddy Carpenter, and me decided to start a men's group, and we started with a movie night, and we watched McClintock. I, I, you know, we just had the worst time. We had no fun whatsoever, and we're going to do that again here pretty soon. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, that was a good time. Uh, then we followed up, starting with a series called Wild at Heart, which was pretty cool. And uh, I actually have a scripture for y'all that uh, really uh, kind of, us men were kind of uh, stirred up by this. It caused a lot of, of uh, consternation would be a good word. So it was, and it's about Genesis 3, the first, you know, the fall. And, you know, it kind of goes and talks about uh, how, Satan as a serpent starts trying to, you know, fool the lady and keep her from, uh, you know, believing in God's promise. So in verse six, uh, she she goes and says, or or I'll just read it. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree uh, was to to be desired to make one wise. She took its fruit and ate, and here's the verse, that, the part that really blasted us men, and she also gave some to her husband who was there with her. And all of us guys, we heard that in the, 
video, we went, no, that's not true. We weren't standing there. The man wasn't standing there. Adam wasn't standing there. And uh, this guy, John Eldridge, is, says, uh, says the guy, Adam was standing right there, and he didn't say anything. Ooh. You know? I mean, here's Adam, supposed to be loving his wife, and just let her get killed. And then she, then he piled on with her. I went, oh, hey, I'll just go on down this road and f- and forget about it. You know, forget about having a relationship that's good and holy and pleasing to God. Then you guys all know the story. He tries to blame God, blame, blame, blame. And us guys, we never do that, right? That's just, <laughs> we never, it's never our fault. And then my wife got me this book that uh, is called Promises from God's Word for Men. And you're going to have to yell at me if I get going too long. So um, the first promise, the first chapter says, God will never leave your side, not even for an instant. And then uh, it says, the Lord is, this is Deuteronomy 31.8, the Lord is the one who will go before you he will be with you and he will not leave or forsake you do not be afraid or discouraged and then uh, a uh, a timely tip that's out of this book this i love this thing <clears throat> if you trust god completely and without reservation you have every reason on earth and in heaven to live courageously that and that's precisely what we should do. And then John Eldridge is—it's his first quote. It just totally mystifies me how God works that out. That was sarcasm, if you didn't get it. Uh, <clears throat> there's a time when we, when <laughs> there is a time when we s- simply have to face challenges in our lives and stop backing down. I don't know. Wow, you know, which is what Adam did is he backed down. And I'm like, I am just like him. So <clears throat> we learned a lot about that in our first uh, eight or nine lessons uh, of our uh, men's group. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we started this next thing that is called 33, the series on authentic manhood. And that's that's what I've wanted in, in my life to be a real man, not I don't want to be like, you know, Dwayne Johnson. I want to be like Jesus, you know, the rock guy. Anyways, uh, I want to be like Jesus. And uh, some of the highlights that we learned or we've been learning because we don't just learn. We take information and then we apply, hopefully, um, was session one that we uh we uh, we realize what uh, manhood's about. Uh, there was a thing on create and cultivate, how God made us so we're, you know, we think things through and we w- try to make things grow and that we actually want to have uh, relationships with other men and and be a team, you know. I mean, most football teams play in a team and, most wars are fought with a team and you know there's team there and there's no i in team kind of get the idea there and then uh, we learned about a, a manhood it is a clear definition um and that that there's <laughs> this is something that bothered me was there's four uh, faces of men which is a, a king a warrior a lover and a friend and we're still processing that one. I haven't quite got to that. And then we have an action plan. And then the next thing we're going on is is more about authentic manhood. So anyways, with all that said, is that a bunch of men are showing up every Wednesday night to grow up. And so if you're tired of being a little kid in a 50-year-old body, show up on Wednesday nights. Every episode builds on the last, but it also stands on its own. So if you just show up, 
it's going to talk about one thing. And this week, we're going to talk about our relationships with our mothers. So you'll really like that a lot. So I, I'm going to show up. If you want something different, if you want to be a man, come out and hang out with us men. That's all I got. Thanks. Thanks.